Well, I was born in this valley On this ranch I was raised I learned to look rope and dally On the S, lazy age I live in Canada, and I live in Alberta, which is sort of near Calgary, which is um, north of Montana in the Rocky Mountains, the western part of Canada. The, the topography is kind of consistent with the western U.S., but the culture is a little different because we have that British hangover, you know, the Commonwealth hangover. <laughs> Everything is better with some cows around. Living in town sometimes brings me down. Let me bestow this western blessing and leave you. Cattle bound, and you always have cows around. My family are all western sort of uh, cattle rancher rodeo people, so I grew, I grew up with that until I was 16, and I thought it was normal. These are the two family cattle brands. That's my mom's side, and that's my dad's side. Haddell and Barrax. The, and these are actually made from ivory that my folks brought back from Zambia before it was illegal, before people were thinking about that stuff. They put on a rodeo in, in Zambia in 1973, and they brought the ivory back, so I had to had it inlaid. Sorry. Okay, so, good to go? Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, uh... One, one more thing I need to do on my phone. <laughs> we are uh, joined with uh, Corb Lund down at uh, the Calgary Folk Fest, and uh, first and foremost, I just want to say I've been a major fan of yours for, uh, you know, a number of years now. Um, as an Alberta boy, obviously, Thanks. you... Where are you from? Uh, I'm born and raised in Calgary. What is your so, name again? Uh, Joe Denz. Hey, okay. Yeah, Corb. Um, so, one thing that I do want to bring up is, uh, and I saw this on Facebook, was that you guys are orchestrating a uh, garage sale oh, yeah. in Calgary here. So, yeah. what's going on with that? Well, after... 65 years of touring or whatever it's been <laughs> we end up with a basement full of odds and ends like, yeah because you can't really practically take three of one design and two smalls of another design exactly because it's just too on the road it's too chaotic so i have a basement full of odds and ends from 10 12 years ago some of it and posters and stickers and baby onesies and water bottles and no, hockey pucks i have literally a hockey pucks Really? And so <laughs> just we just pucks. And we did it in we did it in Edmonton a couple years ago. It ended up being really fun. I, a it was a lot of fun, and B I got a lot of crap out of my basement. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's um, August fifth to seventh in Calgary in Ramsey at a friend's place. Ramsey, okay. It's and easy to find the address. It's online. Okay, just through the Corblon website. Yeah, it's it's one oh eight or ten oh eight twentieth Ave Southeast. But just look online. Perfect, sweet. <laughs> um, so another question I have for you here is. Um, Thanks for the plug. Oh, no problem. <laughs> what, do you, what do you normally talk about on the podcast? So essentially what we do is we discuss uh, entrepreneurship and um, up and coming, uh, you know, artists, country music singers and whatnot. So obviously. Entrepreneurship. Yeah. So uh, one of the last Let's ones we did, that. I don't know if you know about uh, Toolshed Brewery. I don't. So they're quite a big uh, local brewery in Calgary and they were uh, a driving force behind um, getting uh, microbreweries in Calgary so that's kind of something I'm supporting is uh, right. you know local entrepreneurship so um, tell them not to screw with the beer too much yeah that's true right like I, I support microbreweries a lot but I don't often like the beer because I don't need raspberries in it or chocolate or anything yeah Just yeah beer's pretty good as it is but uh, that's what I've been noticing a lot of those ones that are coming up are raspberry ale yeah, and so. I support the idea of them being independent beer makers, but I don't like the beer sometimes. For sure. So, and um, you're obviously a big fan of local business here in Alberta. Um, one thing I wanted to discuss with you was uh, what was going on with the fires in Fort McMurray. Now, um, y you put on a benefit concert for that, right? Well, I didn't put it. I was involved. You were involved with it, yeah. So, what exactly? And obviously with the floods as well, what exactly uh, is it about Alberta that makes you want to you know, give back so much? <clears throat> well, you kind of, that's part of my job, really. Yeah. Like, I mean, my family's been here for six generations, so I'm Jeez. very tied to the place. We're five generations. Yeah. Warner, Alberta is where we're, we're yeah. to, yeah. We're Raymond on one side. Oh, no way. Yeah. You know what that means. I do, I do. <laughs> but Raymond's um, got a good football team. The um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's kind of like, I always tell people that if I was a... You know, it's funny, it kind of makes me, it's a bit corny, but it's pretty real, I think, that the people here react well to crisis. Like, some places in the world, shit goes sideways and right, they're killing each other right away, yeah. or, or the looting starts, or whatever. Yeah. And here, people yeah. jump to the jump to the task pretty quick, and everybody pitches in, and it's, it's nice to see. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I always say that if, if I were, you know, a backhoe operator, I would donate 
those services or if I were a, you know, a doctor, I'd jump in and do that, but I'd just make music. So the best I can really do is try to rally support. And, and uh, I think the biggest thing, they have these benefits and it's like the one that we did in, in Edmonton for Fort Mac was awesome. And it was super successful and they made like two million bucks. Jeez. Which sounds like a lot, but that's like five houses, right? Actually, that's true. So yeah, not to yeah. minimize it, but I think the more important role, and I mean, they made some more money through donations that were inspired by that, but even still, I think the bigger role in those situations is mostly to galvanize the people's feelings and make them feel whole again. Right. Because yeah. I think it makes the people who are victims, I think it makes them feel like there's still people thinking about them and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's a little, that's a little esoteric, but I think it's real. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think the money part is important and it's nice to set an example, but the real practical effect is, is uh, people's making them feel like they're not abandoned entirely. No, exactly. Um, now, to kind of change uh, pace a little bit here, the Calgary Folk Fest, um, what exactly does this uh, festival mean to you? Um, you've played it before, right? Yeah. Um, so what exactly does this mean to you well, here? Well, it's, it's, we have a, we occupy an interesting niche in that we, the, the festivals that we play are a mix of um, straight up ra country radio fest like the Big Valley Jamboree. Right. Or, or something like that's pretty, pretty cowboy like the Stampede. Yeah, yeah. Or sometimes it's dinosaur rock fest. Like I said, we just play with Sloan, Saskatchewan. Yeah. But often about a, 40% of our festivals are folk fests. And it's, it's, there aren't many people, not to brag, but there aren't, there aren't too many people that can straddle that line successfully. And like, we play country fests and it works well, and we play these and it works well. And it's important, it's important to me, those, those groups of people identify with different parts of our music, I think. Like, I think the rural people really identify with the lyrics that I'm, it's, I'm singing about their lives a lot of times. Oh, exactly. But I think the people who come to the folk fest often, are fans of songwriting and, and they like the variety of the, the music I'm using and I think I guess but it seems to work but but it's important for me to it's a whole different kind of person that comes to the folk fest than that would come to the stampede right. so we try to mix it up in in places that were popular Edmonton as well and it's important to me to play at these at these kinds of events because it, it's important to keep in touch with that side of the population oh for sure yeah we're, you know these days more than ever there seems to be some kind of a rural urban divide for sure this, yeah even in the states more so too but here too and it's i feel like again not to be a cheese ball but i think music can kind of unite people and, and make them forget about surface differences and remind them of deeper things that, that are all that we share as humans so i think it's it makes me happy that i can come play here for the for the what are, you know the songwriter fans or maybe the maybe by and large they're more left of center politically yeah and then we can go and play the stampede where maybe by and large they're a little more conservative and 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 they all maybe can get a message out of it and hopefully for sure sometimes we play play bars and we get a good mix of people that, that's what willie nelson was famous for in, in austin in the 70s when he said screw it to nashville he just went back to texas and started playing shows and he would get hippies and bikers and cowboys all together somehow getting along. I think that's a cool thing like, that music can potentially do. Have you ever had the chance to meet like Willie Nelson or No, I don't or... I've met a lot of guys but not Willie. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I played I met Merle Haggard. I played Merle with him, Haggard. I played with him just before he died in November. Are you kidding me? Jeez. I have to I have to do some homework and verify this, but it's a little morbid but this guy who took some pictures of me at the show came to a show a month or two later and gave me the pictures of me opening for Merle. And he said that he follows him pretty closely and he had to cancel a bunch of shows after that and only had a few more after my show that he passed away and he, and he wasn't sure there were any more opening acts so it's possible I may be the last opening act. Jeez, because he was or, a big... Or one of the very last ones. Yeah, and he was a big inspiration for um, Hank Williams Jr. too. You met him as well? I or haven't. No, you haven't. Yeah. Met Charlie Pride a couple times. Jeez. <laughs> Three times actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one last question I wanted to ask you here um, uh, with regards to just Alberta uh, as a whole and I know that a lot of your music is inspired by the province of Alberta. What is it about Alberta that uh, drives you to write your songs like that? Well mostly just that I have such deep roots here. Yeah. yeah. I mean I, it, I, it's just, what I, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of regionalism in yeah. music, it's important I think. And I, I mean if I, I, I try to Actually, Tyson, Ian Tyson was an inspiration that way in that he sort of, when I was just starting to write Western music, he, he was sort of an inspiration in that he, he made me see that it was okay to write about, like it, it's a weird thing with songwriting, it's really easy to put Houston in a song, or, yeah. or LA, or yeah. Chicago, because those already have built-in resonances, but it's hard to put Calgary in a song, and, and make it, and make it, 
transcend this area. Like everybody here thinks, oh yeah, cool, but but to sing a song to a bunch of Texans with Calgary in it is tricky. Yeah. But I've, I've succeeded to, an, to a degree with that, and, and Ian's part of the reason for that. Uh, yeah, anyways, I want to thank you a lot, and uh, as far as your social media goes, People want to check out the garage sale. I don't know if they can see the uh, yeah. picture there, but uh, can they go to? Is it just Corblund on Facebook? Yeah, it's Corblund.com, and we're on Facebook, and it's I'm pretty easy to find. Just Corblund Garage Sale, you find it. Yeah. You know, another thing we're doing that's cool is in August 20, August 20th, we're having our second annual festival in Eureka, Montana. Okay. Oh, Eureka, nice. Yeah. This year we're doing two days because our friends from Nelson, BCDC. Have you heard them? Uh, I've heard of them. Yeah. They're the best yeah. ACDC tribute band ever. Nice. They're from Nelson, BC. So yeah. BCDC. They're playing the Friday night, and then we're headlining the Saturday. So come to that too. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Corb. It's been a pleasure interviewing you. Cool. <clears throat>